Welcome to the Elevate Everyday Podcast. I'm your host, Cade Junkerth, and I own Fitness Junkie Training, where we specialize in helping busy professional men get in the best shape of their life by working smarter and not harder. And today, I'm joined by another badass guest. We got John Graham on this episode. Uh, this man, kind of like me, we connected on this a little bit, you know, started out as a small kid, you know, a little bit insecure, you know, unconfident, just kind of smaller by nature. Um, but through his fitness journey, you know, became a, a jacked CEO. Um, he's been a bodybuilder. He stepped on stage. Uh, he's super dynamic. I mean, this man has been a boxer uh, and then he ended up actually getting a tumor that took him out of that. But then he put it on boxing events. He's worked with people like Tyson Fury. Um, so really excited to to talk with John today. You guys are going to get a lot of value out of this. This guy has done a lot of different things. Um, but now he's a, a CEO of a red light therapy company called Lumiflex, which I'm also very interested in learning more about um, in l- red light therapy in general. So first and foremost, thanks for being on the podcast, John. Um, and then let's dive right into it. So I want to start with, I know you owned gyms when you first got into, or, you know, when you, when you were really into the fitness industry, um, I was Mm -hmm. curious, like what style of gyms did you open? I think you said you had six gyms, um, but what style of gyms were these that you had? Yeah. Yeah. I was uh, going back when you said dynamic, I like (laughs) that. It's, it's more, I always considered myself having some sort of minor ADD. (laughs) <laughs> but I like dynamic. That does sound better. More that of a sounds positive. much more positive. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but yeah, the gyms. Okay, so the first gym that we opened up uh, was me and my best friend at the time. We were just a bunch of gym junkies. You know, the just those boys that were, uh, we worshipped the iron. We were, you know, reading the Flex magazines and, <laughs> you know, attending the Mr. Olympia in Las Vegas every year. Um so we opened up, um, it was a gym, but we wanted sort of like a one-stop shop for everything. So we actually, the first gym that I opened was actually the biggest gym I ever opened. Huh. Um, it was it was massive. It was a, those warehouse style gyms, you know, very, very large, huge right. martial art area. Um, we had like a power lifting area. We had a big classroom for, for yoga. Um, yeah, very, very large weight section area, but we... It was just because, you know, we were, it was like our, you know, our passion business, right? So we wanted everything, yeah. you know, we wanted, we wanted this and we wanted this. So we just, you know, we were just buying things um, and ordering and, and sort of the gym location itself, because it was in a warehouse, we were adding more and more areas to it um, just because it was, you know, we were so excited. If, if I were to, cons- you know, go back, I would encourage people to sort of just be good at one thing. Right. If you're going to go martial arts, go to a martial art gym, open up a CrossFit box, you know, just do the yeah. CrossFit box, you know, don't try to do these big, you know, mainstream gyms. But I remember um, as, as the gym got bigger and bigger, we had to pull funding from friends and family. Really? <laughs> and um, one guy that we involved in the gym, he, um, he had relationships with, he had relationships with the UFC. And UFC at that time was, um, it was just debuting in Asia. So they would go to Macau. And I remember, um, yeah, I remember there was the fight between Rich Franklin and Kung Lei. Uh, never forget this. This was a good, this was a very good memory. Um, but this guy that we had a relationship, he had a relationship with UFC. He actually managed to get Kung Lei to fly in and do a a meet and greet at the gym and this of course excited everybody in you know in that local area in the local community because yeah. he came in and he did a full demo workout um he had like his t-shirts he was signing and um and then afterwards all of us took the trip to macau to watch him fight and the day that we all went over uh, i remember it was actually my birthday and so we had all these, all these um, gym members with the gym shirt over in Macau watching the, I think this was the very first UFC event in Asia. Oh, wow. It was the first one, Rich Franklin Kong Lei. Yeah. That's cool. And um, I remember just because of this relationship we had with Kong Lei, we were very tight with him. Going to Macau, uh, we pretty much owned the entire arena. We kind of, 
yeah, we, we were the most noisy group of people. And um, I remember everybody singing happy birthday to me and the entire, you know, stadium was like, what? That's awesome. Um, yeah, it was really cool. But that was, yeah, that was the first, the first gym was more, more of a, a I would say it was more martial art focused, more combat focused. Right. Okay, cool. Uh, and this is maybe even for my own personal selfish reasons to ask this question, but um, do you find it like there's so much overhead with gyms? Like, did you find it a tough business model? Like, you know, I think every kind of fitness junkie uh, that's really into fitness and like really wants to make it a career, like they have a dream of opening up their own gym. That's kind of always been a dream of mine. But the more I get into online fitness and with how it can be done these days, I'm almost like, is it even realistic or a good business model um, to open a gym? And like, would it really provide that much more um, that I couldn't do online, but I just wanted to hear from your, you know, going through the experience of having six different gyms. Like, do you think it's a, a good profitable business or do you feel like with the way things are now, like the online stuff is more taking over and it's just more realistic mm -hmm. and, and more of a win-win even for, for some of the clients. Like, I, I just like to get your opinion on that. Yeah, I guess it's, it depends on what your, your goals are. Like if, um, you know, if someone's like, I want to be, I want to be a fitness guru, um, a trainer. Um, I want to, you know, be able to impact the world. Yeah. And you kind of see like the best way to do this is to open up a gym because you can fit a lot of people into the gym and therefore your impact can, can scale, you know, and then there's online, which can even scale even more, right. You go into technology and that, right. But, um, I think it's just the, the thing, the, tr the sort of the core traits of somebody who does fitness and who, who, um, wants to impart you know this sort of fitness experience and um and learning to other people it, they have a strong contribution need right you know they have this need you know the six human needs the need for contribution is very very it's something that they really um they can't they, they have to have this is something very important to them it's like out of all the the needs that they have this probably would rank one of the highest right yeah so for them the value that they get back isn't they don't really need the gym to make money that's not really in their thinking they should have yeah. it's more about the impact that they make and the, the faces of the the smiling faces yeah. of the people that come in and who you know get confident and lose weight or you know get um you know sort of get value from from what they're building right but uh, definitely if you're looking at like i need to be able to cover the gym needs to cover its cost i would like to make some more money so that i could have a little bit more you know freedom you know i could travel around I could buy nice things, whatever. It probably is not the best business to to open if you're looking to have a bit of you know a bit of extra, right? It's sort of you have to, you know, people that that are trainers they have to sort of weigh up, you know, what it is that they truly want, and it is a passion business. Gyms opening gyms is a passion business. Right. It's a gym. It's a business where it's like um you know the guy that the Italian who has a, his pizza his pizza restaurant, right? He loves making pizza. He wants to make the best pizza and he wants to you know people to eat his pizza and he likes the, the you know the look that people you know oh wow it tastes amazing that's all he lives for right he's right. not thinking like you know and sure there are ways to scale that right that that amazing um value that you you impart there are ways but usually you need to bring on board somebody who's a little bit more business savvy who's who's good at numbers and who's can um you know help you systemize the business to be able to scale sure. so it like if, if you kind of want both, you should plan it a little bit better. Just sort of see what are the ways in which we can scale the business before we open it. What, what's like our, like, I, I don't want to say our, our, our sell, sell plan or sell out plan or, but just sort of have an idea. If it's just pure passion business, just open up a room, <laughs> just use your, you know, <laughs> bark. <laughs> that, that's what, you know? yeah, that's almost like what I'm thinking about recently. Cause you know, and I think it is just a passion thing for me because, you know, I, I could do just fine um, financially doing the online stuff. That's what I've kind of figured out, which I never yeah. before thought that was possible. I thought like my end goal was like, I need to have a gym so that I can make money. Um, but now I've found out like that would actually just be something that I think would just um, create a more of a community, a stronger bond with people. And that's almost yes. like my drive to want to still do that because I, you know, I don't, it, it almost like, it almost seems like it would be, <laughs> I don't, I feel like it would break even like with all the overhead and everything. Um, and just, yeah. you know, and I wouldn't want it to be like a super expensive gym because the whole idea would be like, I want it to be that community. So, um, yeah, it's not really a, a money 
driving thing that makes me want to do it at this point. It's more of like, I just crave and it's just always been something I always think about. It's always in my mind, even as the the online stuff, you know, just grows. I'm still like, it would just be really cool to have a cool little community. And even, you know, I've done events for my online clients and stuff like that, but just to have a place where we can gather um, and just get workouts yeah, in, I think would be really cool. So, but yeah, we can, we can transition from, from that. Cause I've got a lot of questions to ask you, but I was just curious about, you know, your experience in the gym and everything. And I just wanted to, to hear your take on it. Um, but what made you kind of transition out of the fitness industry in general? I mean, I guess, you know, red light therapy is kind of still health and everything, but, but what made you decide to be like, all right, I'm going to pivot um, out of the fitness industry and do something different. Yeah. The um, def I definitely won't open another gym in my life. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> so I'll never go back there. It's too, yeah, just the cost. Yeah, it's definitely is a bit of something. I, I'd prefer a new challenge, but yeah, like, um, yeah, re, s, s, usually how it always is with me, I think just given my personality is like, I sort of, the, a spark goes off into, in my head, you know, when I go on to a new project or a new venture, it's kind of like this spark goes off. I like this, this fire is ignited, <laughs> you could say. Yeah. And, um, you know, I can't really, I can't really quieten quieten it right like I can't um right. I can not just sort of like oh let, let's leave that let's be I sort of if it hits my head and if, if I keep thinking about it usually I I go for it yeah. um and I already know I'm going to to do it to try it but I try to you know get some feedback ask, ask you know some questions you know take some time alone and think about it but usually it's just to sort of better prepare myself for for jumping into something Nice. And red light therapy very much was like that being able to, um, you know, something being a hundred percent natural, non-invasive, you know, that's, uh, that I, I am dumbfounded every day that why it's not more talked about, why it isn't more readily used. Like why, you know, why is everybody talking about some magical pill or some supplement or this thing that can do this? So, um, when this has been around since the caveman times. So that's kind of the, you know, when this sort of spark goes off in your head, it, it at least for me this is what kind of got me down the the track yeah. of red and, and near infrared light therapy and what it can do but this is opening up to all these other um areas of biohacking and how you can um do, you know and as new information as new clinical studies come out about what red red light therapy can do uh it gets more and more interesting and this fire kind of like um gets hotter you could say right it's <laughs> awesome because I, I, yeah i, I hadn't heard much about red light therapy before speaking with you to be honest with you it's, it doesn't really seem like something that's talked about a whole lot um but you know just to pick your brain on it what does some of like the concrete research say about red light therapy like what what does some of the research say about the benefits and and also like are there certain like resources that we could look towards to to like look more into this stuff that you'd recommend yeah, there are, there's literally thousands of clinical studies that have that are out there. Um, and actually on the website, on the LumaFlex website, you, we have listed a few clinical studies with links to the actual, um, to, to where those, those clinical studies are on the internet. And um, it's amazing because it's, you know, not, are we look, not only are we seeing, you know, performance enhancement, people actually having this, having your mitochondria inside yourself, being able to absorb this energy, right? Convergence energy, and using this energy to um, perform better, but also the having this extra energy to be able to, you know, suppress pain, to alleviate pain that's been around for so long for, you know, depending on the condition, um, even brain injuries, right? People that have had very, very serious issues with their brain for many, many years are suddenly being miraculously recovered just because it's all down to the cellular level. You're getting, you're getting energy on a cellular level. Um, so yeah, it's something that like a lot of people are, are, hesitant to jump into there's obviously a lot of research out there that should people can deep dive into um it, there's mountains and mountains of clinical thousands of clinical studies that are out there um just on red and near infrared and that we're talking like uh pain relief for for brain activity for skin right for healing um you know for 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 teeth for um anti-stress for digestive uh, it, it goes on for for like being able to sleep better right? It's to ener for energy, all of this, it just keeps, it keeps going deeper and deeper and deeper. And it's, it's fun to go down this rabbit hole because people are, you know, they say, oh, what does it do? You know, and it's almost to the point where I'm just like, well, 
I, I don't, I'm trying to think of the things that it doesn't do. It pretty much can, it, as light, what, it, what this light can provide is, um, is pretty much everything. Um, so that obviously is really exciting. But yeah, there's loads of clinical studies out there on the internet where everybody can research and see what, um, what benefits there are. Most in the medical industry, there are most, most doctors, most clinics, uh, most hospitals will ha have some sort of red light therapy that they will prescribe you based on your condition. And um, now it's kind of becoming more mainstream, getting into rehab centers, sports rehabilitation there, um, centers, into gyms. Most big, very, very large mainstream gyms will actually have a red light uh, sauna that you can go to just as part of their the offering that they give in their gym membership. Yeah, um, yeah it's, uh, pro athletes are using it now as as a as <clears throat> it's like a requirement for them after they do their training or do their, um, you know, their whether it be football or, or NFL you know, to be able to keep their body um, energized and, and healing so they can continue to play and continue making money, you know, the, it's actually required for them to use red and infrared light therapy. It's but yeah, good. it's amazing. The device, the, the LumaFlex body <clears throat> probes is, it's the, the, the special thing about this device is the portability, the durability, the flexibility of the panel itself. But the light therapy it's used, I, I've seen it used for even pets. There's, oh, it's incredible. I've seen a company that um, is actually doing really, really well. And they have devices that they use for their pets. You have your little dog or your, you know, it apparently it's used a lot for parrots, for, be, for, for pet birds <laughs> and they shine it on the, and it's, it's, it's in the U S people love it. They want to, they want to, they want this um, sort of treatment for their pets because obviously, you know, pets are really important, right? That, yeah. you know, it's something that is definitely in the U S that's something I, I really, uh, I, I've noticed between the, with this with, with this country versus others, they really take care of their pets. So, yeah, it's, <laughs> that, I had a good laugh when I saw that company. Like, this is just something that popped in my in my head. Is is it safe for your eyes? Do you have to avoid the red light to your eyes? Or yeah, it just depends on the, an existing eye condition that you have. Just also with skin too. Some people <clears> are <throat> sensitive to skin. You know, like albinos, they've got very, very sensitive skin. So if you have a, you know, sensitive eyes for a certain reason, you should ask your, um, ask your doctor sensitive skin, ask a doctor and make, cause you may have a reaction to the red light, but the red, the, the red light actually does support eye health. Okay. So there are like in the, you know, in, in, if, if you go to sort of an eye doctor, so, you know, I've seen devices now that are actually specifically for your eyes. <laughs> so that's, <laughs> it's pretty, pretty wild. Yeah, I don't cool. have one of those, but actually I do, I do, because I'm looking at the computer a lot. So I'm actually thinking about actually having a specific eye, you know, right. eye piece. Well, dang, I'm, I'm going to definitely check out. So lumaflex.com is where, where we can go look at the research and everything you got. Like, yeah, yeah. Okay, sweet. So I'm going to check yeah, that out. I keep, I keep putting up more and more clinical studies right now. It's sort of a, I've got sort of a variety of different ones. I'm trying to put more about, you know, help about performance and pain relief relating to sports because right. it's a product that I'm trying to, you know, um, communicate towards the uh, sports, the fitness, you know, whether they be young or old, but I'm trying to hit this, this, this audience. But of course on that, on there, there's a little bit about skin, you know, there's a little bit about um, hair loss, even, I think that's another, another big one, testosterone boosting, all of this, it's got, I've got a bit of a variety there. Okay. Yeah. I have seen some of that about the testosterone boosting. That's something I'm super interested in because I recently got my blood work. Um, I thought, I thought I would be on the higher end of testosterone, just being someone that sleeps well, works out, eats right. Um, but I feel like I was actually on a little bit, the lower end, it was like 450, 475 or something like that. So, um, a little bit on the lower end, like, um, I'm curious about like, what, what is the, do you literally just like expose yourself to red light therapy and it helps you increase your testosterone? Like what, <laughs> what, That's what it. You know, with this panel, when, whenever I'm asked that, I say, get the panel and you just put it down there. I almost didn't even want to ask it, but I was like, yeah, that, that's kind of yeah, what yeah. I <laughs> yeah. You put the panel down there, you put it on the, yeah. on the, on the jewels. <laughs> Cause I've heard, I've heard that like getting sunlight there um, is, is a way to increase your testosterone. I'm like, I'm not going to be going outside walking around naked. So, <laughs> so that seems yes. like a practical way to, to, to help with that. So that's, that's it's a good little hack. Yeah. <laughs> gotcha. Um, yeah, well, well, that famous, I, the one that everybody talks about is the one on men's health where Ben Greenfield, he did like an official study. Like he actually measured, like uh, he did a full, an experiment. Um, and I think this triggered a bunch of other, uh, you know, major, 
biohackers and optimization specialists to all do a test. And it was pretty, pretty impressive. The amount of testosterone boost you get just from, from red light, whereas testosterone boosting in any, in any form usually requires some kind of not a very evasive means, right? right? If you, if, yeah. you know, whether it be pills or like something, you know, a, a needle, right? Yeah, like TRT or something. Yeah. That's, that's super interesting. That's, that's definitely something I'm going to be looking into now, uh, just so I don't have to walk around naked and stuff, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah. So, um, I, and you said that this is something that once, once it got in your brain, like, you know, you couldn't get it out. It's obviously something you're passionate about. I can completely resonate with that. I mean, my, my idea to like kind of go fully online. That's how it felt for me with that. And then even this podcast, when I started, it was like, I couldn't stop thinking about it. So I think that's a, a really good way to know that you're passionate. You really want to do something and chase something. And, you know, you can see the value that it's going to provide for, for people. Um, so that's really cool. Like, what do you think it is about this red light therapy that like got you thinking like that and like, couldn't get it out of your head? Like what, do you have like a specific story for yourself that like it, ch it changed something for you or like what, what is it about the red light th therapy that you think um, got you so hooked? Yeah, it was, um, it all started actually with my wonderful wife who um, I had a, I had a, a lot of injuries in for, I had two busted um, shoulders from rugby. Um, yeah. Like you said, I did, I did have a tumor in my head, which the doctor told me that it was from, from in, an impact, right? Wow. So it, it was about the size of my thumb. So I had to, it's had some serious surgery to get rid of that. He said, don't, um, yeah, I was, I was told never to like to fight again. That was for sure. <laughs> um, but the worst injury was my, it was my left knee. And I think, I guess it was because it was just something that was very consistent, right? Like for, for many years, it was always aching, especially if I was in a seated position. If I was in, in a position sitting down for over 10 minutes, it would start to, to ache and I would need to stretch the, um, stretch the leg and I tried to massage it and try to get some, like some heat oil or, or even ice, you know, try, try cold therapy just to try to keep the, the pain off. Um, and I remember, you know, just the need, I remember taking flights was really, tough you know like or, or being in a taxi for too long yeah so it kind of was just a consistent wear and tear uh mentally and you know and um obviously you couldn't couldn't really exercise very well i couldn't run couldn't couldn't i couldn't run like i i it would if it would start to feel better and i ran it would doesn't feel worse so i would it was just something that really um kind of got me a bit depressed you would say because usually if you're an athlete you like to work out you sort of you, the the sort of the feedback that you get, the purpose that you get in life is to be able to see, you know, how far you can push your body, right? right? The limitations that, you know, you know, you can pass. Um, so in that, you're not able to do that. You're kind of, you feel like you're confined, you're limited. And this, um, this is a bad feeling for most, most fitness people. Right. Um, but then she, she bought me this lamp. It's this ugly, gross, uh, uh, like heavy lamp that she dragged into the house and um had this big red bulb looked really ugly and um she was like you got to put this you know on your knee and it will you know it'll heal and i remember thinking it was because she's chinese i thought it was sort of some you know feng shui thing or some <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> chinese herbal medicine you know i was like sure sure let's try and um so she would put it on the knee and i remember it got really hot i remember it got <laughs> super hot and uh, I would play this game with the knee where I would try to get it close to get right. the therapy, right? But then it would get so hot, I would move it away. And then I'd sort of go up and down. Um, but after about a week, I remember feeling better. And I would notice it because of the sitting. The sit, I, I wouldn't get, I wouldn't feel pain when sitting. This was the big sort of, the, the thing that really sort of triggered me. Um, but then after about two weeks, Honestly, it hasn't, I've never had that pain. I've never had that issue again. Wow. I've never been in a seated position and been like, ah, I need to stretch my legs. And I remember this so well because, you know, whether it be on a plane or, or in a taxi, or I would always look at very creative ways to be able to stretch my leg and massage it. And I remember having to do this and it was almost like automatic to have to shift yourself and try to stretch and you know, I, I remember it so well. So not having to do that, I was like, wow, it works, right? Um, and this kind of like led me down the the rabbit hole of um of specifically 
pain management, pain relief that red and near infrared light therapy can offer. And I, I think that was sort of the, the spark that went off as far as like performance <laughs> enhancement, like to be able to perform better. It's, I think, you know, for me, and I think for other people that are in fitness, that are athletes that do train, it's hard to measure how, if you perform better, if someone says like, oh, take this pre-workout, right? you will perform better. You're sort of like, well, I, it, it'll, it'll taste good and I'll have energy, but how do I measure if I'm doing better? Am I, not many people that are in the gym have, have this, like, they're not hooked up into the laboratory to where, you know, they say, oh, you, you know, you did an extra two reps when you normally wouldn't have. You would just be like, really? I would, if, if somebody were to tell me that, I would just do the extra two reps. Like it, it, performance is sort of difficult for the, you know, the average Joe Blow who goes to the gym or who, who plays a sport. It's hard for them to measure in their own head, but pain, right. pain and recovery and, you know, muscle soreness, joint soreness, you know, that back pain that you would always get after doing deadlifts that you thought didn't feel right or the neck pain you have when you wake up in the morning, right? This, you can easily say like, ah, I feel that I get I, that. That's, I get it. And if that is relieved and if that goes away, that's where, you know, usually I find that most feedback comes in. People want, want this part of what red yeah. light therapy can offer. Right. Yeah. Um, I've never heard of like your regular, you know, say, Oh, you know, there's a deadlifting competition coming up. Can I win if I, you know, it's kind of, right. like, uh, don't. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I'm interested in it for the testosterone thing. And then, yeah, I've, I've got like, I get this lagging tendonitis here. So I, I arm wrestled a dude that was way bigger than me back in the day. And literally you could, when I did it, um, it was at like a party and you could, everyone heard a pop. It was like, and like, I, I think I literally like ripped a tendon or something. And ever since then, it's bothered me so much. Um, so that pain and then the testosterone thing, I'm, I'm interested in red light therapy for sure. Um, to yeah, see, yeah. see if it can help. Um, that's awesome. Yeah. It's, and it's interesting oh, to hear your story cool. with it. And that, that, it, I think that that's what, you know, really intrigues me about it. is like, you know, when, when you hear these stories of people that, um, you know, are in pain and then they, they use something like that and and it and it helps that i mean that's i don't know if if that if that can help me with that and i and i see that that i'm going to shout it out to the world because that's, it. <laughs> that, that's super beneficial and i can see why you know seeing that for yourself why that could get like stuck in your head and you're like all right i gotta i gotta tell people you know i got so right. it's cool well awesome yeah. um you know and you've had like you said like injuries across time you know you've had the the tumor in your head things like that um i'm curious like how has your training sort of evolved to, to work more on, you know, longevity and working around injuries and stuff like that? Like, what does your training kind of look like these days? Yeah, <laughs> it's not very pretty. It's all over the place. Um, I definitely, yeah, I would say that like, I've always, I always have to train for some kind of end goal. And I guess I'm always trying to figure out, you know, the, what that is because you know the challenge that i think for all fitness people i wouldn't say it's just me but i think all fitness people we have a very good relationship with challenges yeah. right i always say like with challenges it's challenges are like the sort of the um it's sort of the, the part of the life experience right struggle that's right. the whole david goggins thing right david goggins is all about the struggle right and um you know and benefiting from overcoming struggle right so in my in my brain um, I kind of, you know, after all the, the things I've been through, I would say like, I always had, I always had these three phases that I see I went through in life. Phase one was where I had to accept struggle, accept challenge, right? You accept it. It's part of life. Everyone has this deal with it, right? The right. acceptance part. Um, then the, the next phase is where you appreciate it, right? You appreciate this 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 we you know the the challenge what that life life is giving you the struggle that's come and then the final third the, the god mode the, the god level um uh phase is when you look for struggle right that's the old, in whenever look you know looking at guys like david goggins and other you know people like them and how they perform and the psychology behind it does i kind of see that this is how they sort of hacked life they have acceptance appreciation and they look for struggle they look for struggle because 
they get benefit from overcoming it. And that this, this is the, you know, this is kind of written into our DNA. That's why like, you know, the top gurus of the world at least have that, have a head on their shoulders. They don't ever talk about money or chasing cars or chasing this. They say chase struggle. That's what you like. Once you have all the stuff that you want, you won't be happy. What you love is the journey. You love the the push, the grind, right? Yep. And this this is all done in the gym. It's all done in the gym. In the gym, you can get you you can have this. You 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 kind of can have this experience in the gym, right? Um, so I think most of most of my life, I've sort of just been training in with this sort of in mind, right? And then. I was like, well, and now I need to have some some challenge because challenge keeps you accountable, right? And then once you overcome the challenge, you feel great, right? It's you you get very empowered by this. So I've always sort of trained for some kind of competition. You know, usually I would train for a boxing fight, you know, and then that didn't happen. I would train to, you know, on the rugby field. And then I even did bodybuilding for a while, which was which was actually pretty fun. Um, but it's now like when you don't have that challenge, you just train to stay sane. <laughs> I would say, so if someone were to say, when you train right now, what do you, I'm just saying, I just, it just helps me stay stable because, you know, it, you know, work can be very stressful. There's a lot of, a lot of moving parts in my life yeah. where my happy place is, where I find like my p- place of peace, where I fix all my problems is actually in the gym. Yeah. That's how, like, I can't figure anything out, but whether this just be me or like other people in fitness, I think it's just right now, the place where I fix all my problems. So usually I, I exercise just with the purpose of you know, figuring out problems, staying sane, like, you know, keeping a cool head, like when, you know, when, when all the, you know, the business, the family, the, all the moving parts that people have in their lives. Right. Right. So I don't really have a notebook or I don't really follow anything. I kind of, I just sort of, <laughs> I sort of just wander in the gym and, you know, answering emails and, um, <laughs> and gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Well, Does that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, it makes sense. Um, I, I really resonate with what you said about like, you know, almost seeking out struggle, seeking out challenge makes the rest of your life feel easier. It's actually something I, I wrote in my journal yesterday because I do a lot of journaling. Um, but basically what I wrote down was make hard things feel like it's just habit and the rest of your life is going to feel super easy. Like if you can make the the gym, you know, struggling in the gym feel like a habit, if you can make like doing the hard business tasks, like, you know, hopping on the the sales call that you don't feel like hopping on or like hopping on, you know, whatever it may be. Like if you can make the challenging things, like the struggles just feel like it's habit, then your life is going to feel super easy. So I, I resonated with what you said about that. Um, but yeah, do, do you have a specific challenge for you right now? Or do you have like a goal? Do you have, do you have anything that you're shooting for? That's because you said you, you thrive off that challenge. Is there, is there, you know, besides just going to the gym and literally challenging yourself each time, do you have like a kind of a, an overarching challenge that you're shooting for? Yeah, I definitely, when it came to fitness, I, in throughout the entire time that I ever trained, I would, fitness was like sort of more of more medication for my brain yeah um just given the kind of personality that i am um but i never i never really like uh, other than of, of course i lo- like pro athletes like i'm very a big very very big into boxing and tyson fury he's like my hero my absolute hero and um i absolutely love what he does right but i don't i don't want to be a pro boxer i don't want to be a pro athlete yeah i don't i i want to be really good at um building a company and managing people growing teams empowering people leading people i always found this as something that i really wanted to do because you get this is where you get your impact right every tr- every every fitness person who's a trainer at heart that has this deep yearning for contribution this is this is how you can do it is you can't do it by yourself you need a team and you need to cultivate that team to have the same passion as you and then that team grows their own teams and you skate this is how you grow this is how you get really the impact that um, most trainers deep down want right um so for me that's always been my challenge is to is more being able to all the you know the passion the excitement the conviction that i have in my own head being able to resonate it and empower people and grow the company and um and, and you know and our and our mission right and all be sort of moving in the same same direction that for me if someone were to say what's what's your challenge absolutely that's it because that's that's where the biggest impact is is empowering people having them you know develop grow and empower other people and empower other people 
that's how um that would be my biggest challenge that's awesome. um and then for fitness i think it's just to stay sane um <laughs> well I want as like a, you know just something for um for giggles i was um i'm toying with the idea of, of going g- doing a, a boxing fight nice. um but it, this is something that only just recently in the last month came up and i and i've sort of been it's sort of stuck in my head, but I'm, I'm sure it'll go away. I don't think, I, I think it might be a bit too dangerous to get hit in the, hit around the head, right. but I, I still like, uh, you know, I, I did a little boxing recently and I was like, Oh, I still got some, I go. still got the, meat. so I don't know that's, you know, who knows <laughs> the next, next year I might be like finding myself a, a fight somewhere just for yeah. fun, just, just for good. Yeah. What, what I was going to say is I almost feel like, you know, people that are high achieving in their career, it's almost like the, the workouts you're doing is, is training for that. Like, I, I don't think enough people um, think about it in that way. It's almost like, you know, even, especially if you're an entrepreneur, but if you're just in a high achieving a pr- professional, it's like, you're literally your, your career is your sport and you're training your mind to be able to prepare for everything that you have going on with that. So that, that's kind yeah. of the way I think about it a lot of times with, with my own training is like everything I'm challenging myself in the gym, like this is going to build my mental strength to have me be able to pre- um, prepare and be ready for anything that goes on throughout my, my career life. So that's, yeah. that's something that when you were talking like that, that that's just what, what I was thinking about. So yeah, yeah. Um, that's awesome. It's, just, it's the gym's the place where, cause my brain never stops working with when it comes to the business, the business I, being um, being the nature that I am. I don't want to say like, oh, I'm a Scorpio. Scorpios. I don't know enough <laughs> about star signs. I no no clue. Um, but just the nature that I am is if I do something, I put 100 percent into it. Yep. So my brain never stops thinking about it and how to optimize it and how to wh- what what's the pieces that are missing. And, and I get really emotionally invested into the company. I treat it like a person. I yeah. treat the company like a person. All every gym that I built, all the companies I've ever built, I see them as a person. And it's like a it's a little baby when it starts and then it grows and grows and grows and I think about it and I all the time I'm thinking about it. So yeah. usually with the growth of this company and as, you know, as we start to scale and as things get messy and things get unorganized, it's it's very exciting. It is very very exciting. But also you got to make decisions fast. Right. And the way that for me is how I've made my best decisions is in the gym <laughs> yeah. is in the gym. Like if you, if I'm in the gym and I'm doing something in the gym, I've, I'm not emotionally or mentally in uh, invested in what I'm doing. Everything else I'm thinking about something else. I'm just, my body is just sort of, it, it's sort of the happy place where, you know, where everything makes sense. The gym to me is like, you know, I, I get, it's a safe space, right? It's a place where like, you, you know, I feel like I'm in control. So there I make decisions. I awesome. think, oh, okay, I know how to fix this. And then I get back to the computer and I get back on a phone call and I'm like, okay, I figured it out. Yeah. It's so weird. That's, I don't know. It's just a weird thing with me. No, it For does. Whole- make, it does make you think like more logically. I feel like it does. There's something about like getting a good workout in, you know, getting under a bunch of weight on a squat rack or something like that. Like you can't think about you know, things that you were worried about before. And then you're able to think about things more clearly after that. So I completely resonate with that for sure. Um, but I, I wanted to ask you this, uh, this is kind of random, but I, this is just something I wanted to ask. And I was curious, like, why did you move to to Thailand? Like what, what made you want to live in Thailand? <clears throat> Thailand? Yeah. Cause I've always liked Asia, mm-hmm. Asia. I, I love Asia. I love Asia. I love, I like America is great for business. And I love Miami, Miami, New York. Oof, I love New York. I didn't have a single down 10 minutes in New York. I love New York. Um, Vegas, Vegas is fantastic. All these places, like the U.S. is is great for business. I love the, the business mentality of, of, the, of the U.S. But I don't know, just for a place to relax. I don't know. I've always gravitated towards Asia. I can see and that. And I like Asia and I like beaches. I like the, you know, the sunrise, the sunset, the water, you know, this tropical sort of area. And um, I kind of like islands. <laughs> I don't know why. Yeah. I, it was funny. I had this conversation with with the wife as well. Like I was like, yeah, islands, Asia and beaches. It's kind of like, that's kind of like my thing, you know. Awesome. Um, and also Thailand is, um, Thailand is, is, a, is in Asia. It's a very, has a very strong fitness culture. 
Like cool. there's um there's a lot of like famous whether they be fighters that are training here or bodybuilders a lot a lot of them come here because it is um it's quite cost effective for them to like do do right. their training or do their fight camp. Um so you're in it you're in a place where there's a lot of there's a there's a it's a it's a relatively high standard. It's not like I wouldn't say it would be like the as high as the US. Like there are some places in the US that the the fitness standard is extremely high. It's hard to compete with anywhere else in the world. But um but for Asia it's it's a relatively high standard. You see everybody's working out and yeah. you know people running every day or you know you got the guys that do the Muay Thai, right? The 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 Thai boxing, they're running every day. I like that. It's kind of, you know, it's motivating to be around them. Yeah, and but, then um, I didn't know that until I talked with you. And then after talking with you, just talking about Thailand and stuff like that, I, I told my girlfriend, I was like, let's, let's move to Thailand, <laughs> but not yeah. as far as right now, but you know, maybe in the far future, like, you know, when we're retired or something, it, it just seems like a really cool place to be, uh, honestly, after yeah, yeah. thinking about it more. Um, that's really cool. Um, I want to ask, you know, I, this is something I ask all my guests. Uh, the Elevate Everyday Podcast is all about taking action immediately after after what you listen to on here. You know, I want you to take action, not just about listening. Put this stuff into place in your life so you can elevate every day. What What's one simple thing that you can challenge the listeners um, to start putting into place in their life um, to take action on after listening to this that's going to improve them that, that 1% and elevate every day? Yeah, taking action. Taking action. Yeah, my problem has never been taking action. It's actually been, I need to actually stop and think. <laughs> I'm a, I'm a bull. I just run. I'm like, go, you know, so right. now I'm going to be a little bit more cautious to think a little bit more before I make decisions. Um, but yeah, there's, there's obviously upsides and downsides to that. But I think if I were to tell someone to like, you know, what's something to, that you can walk, walk away, you know, walk away from this. Um, definitely this concept of struggle. I wish that I, somebody explained this to me when I was young. I really, really wish because it's, it is like, if you were to imagine life as a game and you're an avatar and there's like levels and all of this, this is kind of almost like a cheat code. It's kind of like you getting the full concept, the whole, the hack of life in the beginning. Yeah, yeah. It's just this concept of struggle. And when you really, really understand it, if you hyper-focus on figuring this out, you understand everything. It's everything gets clear. You understand why people behave a certain way or yeah. why you know, or what you need to do to be able to excel in your job or make that sales call, right? Or ask your, ask your boss for a higher wage or how you yourself can put your, you know, yourself to bed at night. It's just understanding that struggle is in our DNA. We have been, it, as a human being, we need struggle. We, we really deeply need struggle. If we don't have struggle, that's when you get lost. You start to figure out, like, you start to like gravitate to things that you shouldn't. Um, so look, don't, don't just accept it. Don't just appreciate it, but actually look for struggle. Yeah. Um, and if there, if, if someone's like, okay, what do I do right now? I would just say, yeah, make a list of things that you've sort of, in a sense have been putting off because you're yes. you know, worried about failure or something, but do that. And then try to actually look for it. Like nice. try to go to God mode as quickly as possible. There you go. Yeah. And I think there's kind of a stigma. I think people hear that sometimes and, you know, in the fitness industry, you'll see it on social media and stuff like that. Like you need to struggle and people take it the wrong way. It's like, well, why would I want to just struggle? But I think you explained it in a good way where this is going to help you when you seek out the struggle. Um, it's going to help prepare you for like the struggle that you're inevitably going to go through in life anyway. It's going to help you overcome those things easier when you seek struggle out and you're able to to like build your struggle muscle in a way. Um, and yeah, it's going to prepare you for everything and help you grow stronger um, and get through struggles um, when you, when you seek out and you get better at getting through struggle. So I, that, that's kind of, you know, I, I think it was a really good way that you put it. And and I hope people resonate with that because I think a lot of times you can hear it where, you know, David Goggins is like <laughs> just talking about having to go through all this painful stuff, but, yeah. but I think knowing the reason and how it actually benefits you when you seek out the struggle um, that that's important for people. And so I, I'm really glad that you said that. Yeah. Uh, awesome. Well, cool. He's John. So yeah. Goggins. Yeah, I know. David Goggins, <laughs> David Goggins is a very, like, he's a good inspiration. But yeah, like you said, a lot of the stuff that he says is extremely aggressive. And your average person is, they they may be triggered to motivate, be motivated every now and then. But right. for sort of consistent motivation to that you can use and implement and that you can carry you through this whole life thing that we all have to go through. It's the deep down is just the concept that like, that, that actually 
it, crazy as it sounds, you you won't be happy if you don't have struggle. Right. In it, in it, in it, like as crazy as that sounds, uh, once you really understand it, you you see that the, that that's actually the thing to be happy is you need struggle. That's how, that's like as cavemen, we need to to yeah. do like if you didn't because well, if everything put on this planet just to sit and eat grapes, right? That that's right. when depression kicks in, anxiety, you know, insecurity, lack of confidence. That's when things are too easy. When it's hard, that's when you're doing the human thing. You're doing the, you know, what you're supposed to. That's where you get happy. Well, that that's what's going to make the good things feel better because you got something to compare it to. You know what I mean? It's yeah, like that's if everything if everything was just easy all the time, it would just, you it wouldn't even feel like it's a good thing because it's that's just all you know. But when you when you have it to compare to when you were struggling, then it feels really good. You're like, oh, I got through the struggle. I got to this good thing. So, so I think that's the reason why with that. But very cool. Um, well, also, wild world. What's that? So why it's wild, right? When you think about yeah. it, but it's but yeah, it's an interesting exactly concept. That. It's something I've been thinking about a lot, honestly. <laughs> um, and I think it has a lot to do with dopamine, which is something I've talked about with some other guests that we had on recently. I had a psychologist on. We were talking about it, but um but yeah i really appreciate you coming on john um I, I know the listeners got a lot of value out of this guys um but when you listen to this like we said like put put this stuff into action in your life right away it's not just about listening it's about taking action right away okay um but john where where can the people find you where are you most um kind of active on on social media and stuff yes so the lumaflex.com is the um is the uh, red light therapy panel um, for me, myself, actually, most of my comms, especially with um, the US or, or different or, or Europe, it's actually on Instagram. So just John Grant Fitness, usually uh, that's actually where I do most of my 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 um, just one on one communication. So, yeah, feel free to reach out. Cool. Very cool. I really appreciate you coming on, John. This was a an awesome one. Um, guys, Take action right away. Check out LumaFlex. Check out John on John Graham Fitness on Instagram. I connected with him. He's got a pretty good following on there. He's got some good content. Tyson Fury is in one of his pinned posts I saw. So <laughs> it's pretty cool. Um, oh, sorry about that. Jeez. But uh, yeah, so guys, stay tuned on the podcast every week for expert guests like John. Um, make sure to smash the like button, smash the subscribe button. If you're watching on YouTube, I'm also on Spotify and all those different things. If you're listening in, uh, but stay tuned guys. And in the meantime, elevate every damn day. See you in the next video. Peace.